Feebas is probably one of the hardest Pokemon to find in the games. It can be found on Route 119 in only 6 spots in the water at a time. In those spots where Feebas can be found it has a 50% chance of appearing. So the fastest way to brute force results is by going through all the fishing spots and fish there once to see if Feebas is there or not. This however takes way too much time. And if you can't get through it all in one day then you have to start all over. So I thought to myself, there has to be oh, a better way. Wow. And decided to take a deep dive into the code and found a way to figure out where Feebas is located. Let's get started. Before we can do anything we have to understand how the game decides where Feebas will be located. The locations are determined by a random value tied to the current most trendy phrase, which can be found by talking to this random NPC in Due for Town. Unfortunately we cannot determine the Feebas spots just by knowing this trendy phrase, so we will also have to find a way to determine what the random value for the most trendiest phrase is. But before we do that, let's first continue looking into how this random value is used to distribute the 6 Feebas spots in Route 119. Whenever we will do any fishing encounter, it will call this function to check if the encounter should be a Feebas or not. Let's take a look at this function. The first thing it does here is check if we are indeed on Route 119, and if not we return to create a normal fishing Pokemon. The very next thing is checking in which segment of the map we are. They decided to cut the map into 3 different segments for the Feebas calculation, so that we won't have to check all the tiles every time we decide to fish here. After this we do a 50-50 chance to see if the encounter can be a Feebas or not. After this we finally start distributing the Feebas spots, and the first thing we do is seeding the separate RNG dedicated for this. Like mentioned before they are using the random value of the trendy phrase for this. And directly afterwards generate 6 spots where Feebas will be located. They do this by getting a random value from our newly seeded RNG function, modulo the total number of spots to make sure that it falls within our range. However they added a little check for if the value is 0 and change to the max value if it is. They did this because the first Feebas index is 1 instead of 0. Now next up is a more interesting check. The generated Feebas spot is only valid if it is less than 1 or greater than or equal to 4. The first check is completely pointless, because we just change the value if it is 0, it can never be less than 1 because of it. The check for greater than 4 however implies that the first 3 spots are inaccessible, and they made this code to avoid Feebas from appearing there. I have some questions at the moment, like why is Feebas even allowed to appear in these spots where we can't reach it? Can we solve it by going to the root of the issue and figure out why Feebas is even appearing there in the first place? They decided to solve it like this but we'll get more into this soon and get to the bottom of this. Now lastly we call a function to get the fishing spot ID that we're currently fishing in and compare if that ID is in the list of the generated Feebas IDs. If it's in the list, then we generate a Feebas. Now it's time to take a small step back. We now know how the Feebas spots are generated and learn that some spots are impossible to reach and they made code to get around this issue. Let's try to understand why Feebas is allowed to even spawn here in the first place. Perhaps there are some other spots that they missed. Anyway, to do this we have to understand how the game determines what spot of the map is a Feebas spot. Let's go back to this function that we glossed over a while ago. This function returns the fishing spot ID that we are currently fishing in. By diving a bit deeper into how the game determines if a tile is a fishing spot or not, we can figure out why Feebas appears in those 3 unreachable spots. So let's take a look. In this function it goes through all the tiles in the one third of the map we are on, and checks if the behavior of the tile is surfable and not a waterfall. If that checks out, then it is counted as a Feebas spot. So the first 3 spots have the wrong behavior set to make them spawn a Feebas. And now to fix it we will simply set the behaviors of these spots to something different, right? Well, unfortunately it's a bit wow. more complicated. Let me explain and let's take a look at how a map in the game is put together. Each spot in the map grid consists out of 16 bits, 10 bits to choose which tile is placed here, 2 bits for the collision value and 4 bits for the elevation value. The tile ID is important to us. Each map in the game has the ability to use 2 tile sets in the design. Each tile set consists out of 512 different tiles. There are many many different tile sets available, but we will only take a look at the general tile set and the tile set for Fortree City because these are used to create Route 119. The general tile set includes the things you'll find in most places, like water, trees, grass, rocks, the Pokemon Center and many more things. 
and the Fort Three City tile set has the unique tiles for the houses in that city, but it also has the weather station. Now each of these tiles in the different tile sets also has its own attributes. The layer type and the behavior of the tile. We're only interested in the behavior at the moment. There are a total of 256 different behaviors to choose from, and each of these have flags to let the game know which behaviors are surfable or can hold encounters. Let's take this normal water tile for example. This tile has the behavior set for ocean water. If we then check the flags for ocean water in the game files, it says that it is surfable and can hold encounters. Pretty straightforward, right? The next step is figuring out which tiles exactly are the ones causing problems. For this I made a little program to go to each and every single tile and show us every spot where Phoebus can appear. Let's take a look. In this map here you can see the three unreachable spots. One is just a normal water tile and the other two are in these rock edge tiles where you can't even fish. What's interesting though is that four more of these tiles also appear a bit further down in a reachable spot. So Phoebus can spawn in this spot but we cannot fish here. Meaning that our total now comes up to 7 unreachable spots. Um, slight correction, 10 unreachable spots. Below the waterfall over here are 3 more unreachable spots where we cannot come. Bring the total up to 10 unreachable spots. They made code to avoid the first 3, but the other 7 are still possible for our little fish to appear here. Another fun thing to note is that Phoebas appears under the bridge in a glitchy way. If Phoebus appears in this unreachable spot right here, then it will appear in all spots under the bridge. Yeah, I don't think that is supposed to happen. Anyway, let's go over each unreachable spot and see why Phoebus appears here. The first unreachable spot looks like a normal water tile, and the one below it that doesn't have a Phoebus looks just the same. So what's the difference? The difference lies in the behaviors of the two tiles. The tile with the Phoebus has the behavior set for ocean water, like in our example. But the one below it has the normal behavior set, which in turn has no flag set for it being surfable or for holding encounters. It is basically just a water tile but for show and to make sure Phoebus doesn't appear here. Both of these tiles exist in the tile set as a separate entity, so to fix it we simply let the map know to pick the tile with the normal behavior, like the ones around it. Like that Phoebus won't appear in that spot anymore, bringing the total number of unreachable spots down to 9. The next 6 spots are all the same tile. For some reason this tile also has the behavior set for it being ocean water. One solution is to change the behavior of this specific tile to the normal behavior, like the unreachable water. But luckily for us there is another tile that looks exactly the same in the general tile set, with the correct behavior. So if we change the ID of it in the map to the other tile, then Phoebus won't appear in these spots anymore either, bringing the total number of unreachable spots down to 3. The last 3 spots look on first sight the same as every other water tile, but if you look a little bit closer you can see the top part of the tile is a bit darker. This is done because it is just below the waterfall. The same spots are used on the other waterfall right here, and these are reachable spots and Phoebus needs to appear here. So the first thing I did again is go through all the tiles and see if there is another tile that looks exactly the same but with a different behavior. Unfortunately though there was none, this is the only tile available. So what do we do now? Is it still possible to fix these last 3 spots? Luckily for us we can, but we have to make a copy of the original tile and give it a different behavior. Luckily there are many unused spots available, so I decided to use the first unused spot and make a copy of the special water tile under the waterfall. Lastly we simply change the behavior to normal and like that Phoebus won't appear anymore, making all spots now reachable. But there is still something that's bothering me. Why does Phoebus not work well under the bridge? Let's take a look at the behavior of these tiles. These bridge tiles above the water have the behavior set for bridge over ocean. This behavior has no flag set at all for it being surfable, so it makes sense that the current code for Phoebus disregards these spots. But Phoebus can still appear here, and if it does, it appears in all spots under the bridge. So what's going on? Let's take a look again at this loop, where it determines which Phoebus spot we are fishing in. This loop counts all the Phoebus spots up until we reach the spot we are fishing in and returns it. Since the behavior under the bridge is not counted as a Phoebus spot, we will never return inside this loop. But there is another return statement outside of the loop, once it has counted all the spots in the section. In our case this is equal to the first fishing spot in section number 2, 
which in the base game is equal to this unreachable spot, but this spot next to it in our fixed game. So if Phoebus is generated to appear in the first spot of section number 2, then it will always appear in all spots under the bridge. So how can we fix this? First let's take a look at why we can fish here in the first place. Besides checking if the tile we're facing is a normal water tile, where we can fish, it also checks if we are facing a bridge above water. In total there are 4 types of behaviors that fit this requirement, and our bridge is one of them. So if we want Phoebus to appear in these spots, we have to add this extra check to the code to take bridges into account. Adding this check now brings the total of Phoebus spots back to 447... or 453 apparently? There is another bridge above water where we can't actually surf. To fix this newly created issue, we simply do the same as before with these 3 tiles above it. We make a copy of these bridge tiles and give them the normal behavior so that Phoebus won't appear anymore, bringing the total finally back to 447. We now fixed everything in the map, but there are still a few more things we need to update in the code as well. First of all we have to change the total number of spots available in each section. And lastly we need to remove the code they made to filter out the first 3 spots. And like that we have a game that will only generate Phoebus spots in places where you can actually fish. Well that detour took a little longer than expected. With our little side quest now completed we can go back to our main quest. How can we determine where the Phoebus are located? Currently our best bet is still to fish in every tile once and see if Phoebus is there or not. But there has to be a better way to find this fish right? Hmm. Do you all remember Mirage Island? One of the ways of getting to the island was seeing the old man every single day with all the Pokemon you had and pray to the RNG gods that the Mirage Island will appear. But another way was to restart your game with the battery removed. And like this the value for Mirage Island will always stay zero, making it a lot easier to find the Pokemon that we need. What if we do the same for Feebas? When we restart the game it will initialize the value for the trendy phrase in Dewford and it won't change anymore because we removed the battery. The only problem we face now is that the 20 phrase will be random every time we restart the game, but at least it won't change anymore afterwards. Next up let's take a look at how the 20 phrase is initialized when we start a new game. In total the game generates 5 different trendy phrases and then sorts them based on their trendiness. The trendiest of phrases is what we're looking for and holds our random value for the Feebas RNG. Let's take a look at how all of this is coded. When we start a new game, we get into this function to initialize everything. A bit further down is the function to initialize the Juver trend. Inside this function we loop 5 times to generate the 5 phrases like mentioned before. The first thing that is done is generate the phrase itself. The first word is from the group conditions, and the second word is either from the group lifestyle or hobbies. Which one is chosen is based on the first bit of a new random value. Once the phrase is generated, we set the value for gaining trendiness. And lastly in this loop we execute a function to set the last few values. Let's take a look. The first thing that is done here is getting a new random value, modulo 98. Based on this result we will either do more RNG calls, or set the last 3 parameters of the trendy phrase. All the way at the bottom here we can see the random value that we are looking for. This whole process is done 5 times and afterwards they are sorted based on the trendiness. If the trendiness of two phrases are equal somehow, then we will take whichever has the highest max trendiness value. If that value is also equal, then we will do one more RNG call and determine it randomly. And that is everything related to the generation of the trendy phrase. Recreating all of this is pretty straightforward, but we still have to know the exact RNG value when entering this function. Maybe we can find a good starting and end point for us to hold on to. And luckily for us, right after the function for Juford, the lottery number is initialized. Meaning that we now have a good endpoint to hold on to. When we scroll up a bit more, we also have a starting point. In Ruby and Sapphire, the trainer ID and the seeker ID are generated right after the other. But in Emerald, only the seeker ID is generated here. Next up, we will need to take a look at how the RNG itself is initialized. Let's first take a look at Ruby and Sapphire. When the battery is removed we know the RNG is always initialized with this value when you boot up the game. For Emerald however the RNG is never initialized and will always have 0 as a starting seed. 
But Emerald has another seeding in the new game process. After confirming your name it will reseed the RNG with your future trainer ID. For Ruby and Sapphire none of this is done and it will just keep calling the original seeded RNG function every single frame. I think we have a good grasp on everything now. It's time to put everything together and find Feebas. In Python I now made code that can take all our input values and use them to find the Feebas spots. Let's take a look. The first thing we do is initialize the RNG based off of the game we are playing. Afterwards the fun begins and we get into a function that keeps advancing the RNG until it finds the values that match the lottery number. It does this for a total of 20,000 RNG calls, or about 5.5 minutes in the game. So if you would take longer than that to start your new game after seeding the RNG then it will not succeed in finding Feebas. All of the values that are found are stored in an array for later use so that we can find the trendy phrase before it. Now the next step is a bit different between Ruby and Sapphire and Emerald. For Ruby and Sapphire we have a clear start and end point. The trainer ID is our starting point and our end point is a lottery number. From the lottery number we can reverse the RNG function and keep getting the previous value until we get the trainer ID. If we can find the trainer ID within 50 or so reverse RNG calls then we can continue to the next step. Which is to do one more reverse RNG call in order to get the secret ID. Might as well find that value as well while we're at it, right? Afterwards we progress the RNG a bit more and get it ready to generate the trendy phrase, the same way the game does it. And lastly we generate the lottery number again to see if it matches the previous value we had. And if all the values match then we have found the seed to generate Feebas in Ruby and Sapphire. Now it's time to take a look at Emerald. This step for Emerald is a bit more difficult because we don't have a clear starting point. Our starter point would have been a secret ID but that is, you know, secret. So how do we find Feebas then in Emerald? I made the code more flexible for Emerald. Since we don't have a clear starting point we have to try many different starting points. The code keeps trying until it finds a starting point that fits our inserted values for the trendy phrase and the lottery number. Now I also want to try to find a secret ID for Emerald. But this gets a bit more tricky and unfortunately I can't know for sure what the value of this will be. Because multiple starting points could lead to the same results. But I can give a range of values that could be the secret ID. It's at least better than nothing. Once the trendy phrase has been found successfully we can seed the RNG for Feebas with a random value and generate the Feebas spots. Now with all this code and information I decided to put it all together into one tool that can calculate the FIBA spots for the Gen 3 games. Here on the left you can see a map that you can move around with your mouse and see where the spots are located. And on the right we have some amazing art made by my brother and also the necessary fields that need to be filled in to calculate the FIBA spots. Once you have filled in all the values correctly you can press the calculate button and it will show all the FIBA spots in the map on the left. In case you don't want to search for them in the map you can also press the buttons below to find the spots quickly. In this field over here you can find the secret ID that has been found for your game. But like mentioned before in Emerald this could be multiple values and one of them should be your secret ID. And in case you wanted to use this tool for the updated game with the fixed spots there is an option in the bottom left corner for that as well. To find the code for this tool you can check out the link in the description to the github page. It has been tested with quite a few save files so far and has always been able to find Feebas. But if you encounter any issues or have questions about it you can either leave a comment here on YouTube or join the Discord to get some support with using the tool. And with that we have finished our adventure with Feebas. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.